Hello, this is Vicki Woodyard. The first time I ever sat in a Vernon Howard classroom, I was terrified. There was so much about that room that seemed to close in on me, to focus in on my fear. There was a sign that said, no talking to Vernon. And his desk was elevated a little bit, and his desk was shabby, and it had papers all over it. He was wearing a <clears throat> short sleeve shirt, and his hair was sort of wild on his head. And I thought, what in the heck am I getting in for? And the people around me weren't dressed like I was. I was from the South. <sighs> but this was the Wild West, or so it seemed like the, um, the ladies wore like jean skirts and boots and the men all had on jeans and plaid shirts. It was just like I was in a different uh, realm. I felt like fleeing. And after that first talk was over, <clears throat> I said I wouldn't go back. But I continued to go back, even talking about it. Listen, <clears throat> let me have some coffee. My my voice is cutting out on me, just like the terror when I brought it up constricted my throat. There was a reason that Vernon behaved that way. He didn't want it to be like Sunday school. <laughs> he wanted to give us the very bottom line about us, and it was not comfortable. And indeed, it never got comfortable. So what kept me there? What brought me there? Destiny. I had lost a child and my heart was broken. And I had a deep interest in esoteric Christianity. My mother had been on the path and she had studied Gurdjieff and I had read some, some things about Gurdjieff and I was fascinated. And I'm a Scorpio and I'm quite intense and quite like a detective when I began to ferret out true teachings. And I knew that Vernon knew the truth. And the truth was that we were all scared. <laughs> you know what, let <laughs> It has to be that way. He used to say, you have to get to the point where you're lying down on the floor screaming and crying. And you won't get up because you've been there so many times before. And every time you got up, you, you were as bad as when you fell down crying. I try to make some of my writings like that. And this is a fierce talk. Because Vernon Howard dealt it fiercely. What am I going to tell you except I've been a Vernon Howard student for decades and I'm as, just as bad off as I was from the day I first got there. The difference is I'm, I know that now. And I can assure you that it's called humility. <laughs> it's called humility. And when I listen to Leonard Cohen, who I say is the master, he is talking about that place that Vernon talked about. Vern, Leonard called it crawling around on the carpet at 3 a.m. in the morning looking for something and you can't find it. You have to be desperate to want the truth, folks. I will drink a sip of coffee to that. I hope that I have gotten rid of hundreds, maybe thousands of people that have visited my website over the years. At this point, about 20 years into the journey, I only get about 20 views a day on my blog because people don't want to hear what I write or say. The bottom line is life is scary as hell. You're not going to get out alive and you're never going to feel comfortable. When you feel comfortable, you're asleep. So Vernon was there to give us mental nookies and wake us up, you know. He had a raucous sense of humor, which made people squirm. He had a depth about him 
that made us recognize he was our teacher. And I'll drink to that, and I'll say adios, amigos. I don't expect to see many of you again. And if you do, I can see right through you because you're just as scared as I am. Namaste.